Good evening and welcome to The Road Toward Salvation. I'm your host, Richard Lane, Catholic Evangelist Richard Lane. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them to the Gospel according to St. Mark. We'll begin in the second verse of the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Again, Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 2. Again, welcome to this, excuse me, welcome to this episode of The Road Toward Salvation. If you want more information, please go to the website, richardlaneministries.com. That's richardlaneministries.com. If you would like to get previous recordings, uh, previous content on this, uh, on this retreat, please go to youtube.com slash Richard Lane Ministries, youtube.com slash Richard Lane Ministries. While you're there, please hit the subscribe button. That way you will not miss out on any future content. There's also, you can also catch up on the previous days of this retreat for Lent of 2021. Again, richardlaneministries.com or simply go to youtube.com slash Richard Lane Ministries. We begin our reading tonight in the Gospel according to St. Mark, Mark chapter 9, beginning in the second verse, and it reads, After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came casting a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. May the Lord add a blessing to the proclamation and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together. We pray, dear Lord, that you would continue to cover us with your anointing. Continue to cover us, dear Lord, in the quietness of our lives. Father God, we pray that you might transfigure us, change us into what it is that you desire for us to be. We ask these in all blessings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. I want to talk to you this evening from the subject of shut up and listen. <laughs> shut up and listen. You know, one of my favorite all-time movies was a movie called Crimson Tide. It featured Gene Hackman and the great Denzel Washington. One of my favorite parts of that movie is they're on a submarine and they're just about to submerge. Gene Hackman, and Denzel Washington's character are standing on the bridge just before the submarine's about to submerge. Of course, Gene Hackman hands Denzel Washington a cigar. And he says, this is part of your requirement for command. They both light the cigars, begin to smoke, puff the cigar. Gene Hackman looks over to Denzel Washington's character and says, this is my favorite part of the cruise, right here, right now. And in that part, the wind is blowing in their faces. The sun is shining beautifully. It's just a beautiful day. And Gene Hackman says, this is the last time for three months of polluted air. He said, this is my favorite time my best part. And then he just stops. And then 30 seconds passes away and he says, bravo, bravo, Hunter, to Denzel Washington's character. He said, you passed the test. And he says, what do you mean, sir? 
He says, you knew when to shut up and enjoy the moment. Most eggheads wanna talk the moment away. We have to know when, to, when the time comes to be quiet and to just really enjoy the moment. In 2019, I was blessed to be able to, actually 2020, I was blessed to be able to take a trip, a pilgrimage to the Holy Land and I got a chance to be able to not only celebrate mass at the church of the transfiguration, but I actually got a chance to just enjoy it, to just stand there and be in the moment where Jesus stood talking with Moses and Elijah. That moment represents a time of fulfillment a time of divine encounter, a time where three lives crossed. Moses represented the law of the Old Testament. Elijah represents the prophets. Jesus represents salvation. They came together. The trinity of salvation came together if you will. And here are the disciples. The disciples are sitting there, and of course, Peter, Mr. I'm going to go cut somebody's ear off. Mr. I, I don't know you, Jesus. He denied Jesus three times, the first pope. Jesus, here Peter is talking the moment away when he should just shut up and be in the moment. I want to give you three points, and then I'll take, I'll take leave. Number one, transfigure. 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 We must, in order to transfigure, it means to, to transfigure something to more beautiful, to elevate, to be elevated or to be lifted up. Here in this moment, Jesus was lifted up among the law, lifted up among the great prophets. He was lifted up and transformed into something so beautiful, so magnanimous that they couldn't stand it. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that they were afraid. But in this moment, Jesus is beautifully changed into something divine in the eyes of the disciples. We must allow ourselves to be transfigured. We must allow ourselves, when we come to Jesus every single day, we must allow ourselves to be lifted up to God, to be transformed into something more beautiful than we were yesterday. Sin is something very ugly, and we are slaves to sin. But it is through God's grace it is through his mercy, it is through the love of Jesus that we are washed clean of that ugliness, that we are transformed daily into something beautiful that God is pleased with. Daily, we are lifted up from the ground of dirt, from the ground of sin, from the ground of destruction. We are lifted up from the death into new life. Number one, be transformed. Be transfigured each and every day. Number two, and this is hard for me, be quiet. Be quiet. We need to stay in the moment. In verse five, it was then that Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and for Moses and for Elijah. And then the next words were, they were afraid. Obviously, that tells me when Peter is talking, he's normally afraid. Many of us are afraid. And then when we get afraid, we begin to gossip. We begin to talk out of the sides of our necks. We begin to say things that we don't mean. We say things to those that we love that we sometimes later regret. We need to be quiet. God wants us to be in the moment. 
He wants us to, to, to live in his silence, to be in his silence, to just hear his voice. Listen to what God is trying to say to you in the quietness of our hearts. You know, many of us can become too busy, busy doing this, busy doing that, burdened under Satan's yoke, B-U-S-Y. And the evil one wants us to be too busy. He wants us to continue to run our mouths and to, to continue to do, 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 instead of just being calm, being quiet, being in the moment. Transfigure, be lifted up to God, quiet, be in the moment and listen to what God has to say. And finally, enjoy, enjoy that moment, enjoy that time with God, enjoy your surroundings, make something of nothing. In the nothingness, make something of it. Make it joyous. Make it a wonderful opportunity to commune with God, to commune with someone that you love. Just sitting, holding hands, just being in the moment in your thoughts and in your prayers, in that time of silence, feel the presence of Jesus. Verse 7 says, then the cloud came, casting a shadow over them. Then, the, then from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. You see, God is trying to place a covering over each and every one of us. As in the Old Testament, when the temple, when the word of God was being preached in the temple, the sign of God's presence was a cloud. A cloud came over the temple. And the temple was filled with the presence of God. It overshadowed them. That's what God wants to do with each and every one of us. He wants to overshadow us with his love with his confidence, with his strength, with his endurance. He wants to overshadow us in the beauties of the ugly, ugliness of this world. He wants to overshadow you and tell you the same words that he told his son. This is my son. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are my daughter with whom I am well pleased. Listen to me. Be transformed. Be lifted up in the silence of our hearts. Let us continue to enjoy all that God has given to us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time of grace. We thank you for this time of mercy. We ask, dear Lord, that in the beauty of our hearts, which is you, that you would come into our hearts in a special way, that you would come into our lives in a special way, that you would fill us, dear Lord, with your love, fill us with your grace, fill us with your mercy. Dear Lord, transfigure us into something more beautiful than we are. Father God, in the quiet moments of our hearts, hear the depths of our hearts. Hear the cries coming from the depths of our hearts. Father God, we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your greatness. And dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you until that time that we have been called home to you. 
which is our destiny. We pray this in the name of he who made it possible for us to be saved, to be able to come back home to heaven. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on the road toward salvation. Please go to the website when you have a moment, richardlaneministries.com. Check out the website. It's being updated every day. There's some new things there. I want you to please consider a love offering. You know, this is the time of almsgiving, but every day is the time of almsgiving. A lot of people are afraid of giving. I love to give. I don't understand why people don't enjoy giving to the Lord. Yes, we love to give of our time and our talent, but many of us are skittish of giving our treasure. The treasure that God gives to us is, does not belong to us. It belongs to him. And he tells us to give and it will be given back to you. Well, Lord, why do we have to give money? Because it takes, it costs in order to be able to minister to others. But God says, don't judge. If you give it in his name, it will multiply. The word of God says in generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord, be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes in a spirit of joy, in a spirit of gladness, in a spirit of celebration. Give to the most high as he has given to you generously according to your means. For the Lord is one who always repays and he will give back to you sevenfold. That is the word of God that comes from Sirach chapter 35 verses 7 through 10. This is your opportunity to play a part of the new evangelization. Many of you are not able to travel and to go and to pe preach and speak the word of God, but I'm willing. I'm willing to do it, but it costs money. And that's how you continue to play a role, a major role in the new evangelization, in sharing the word of God with others, because you make it possible. Your donations make it possible. So if you would be so kind, consider a $20, $50, $100 uh, love offering. Thank you very much for that person that just sent in a love offering. Thank you so much. It will go toward touching the lives of so many people around the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those that, gave, that are giving, that are going to give out of their surplus. We thank you, Father, for those that give out of their need. Dear Lord, we thank you for those that wanted to give and were not able to give. We thank you, dear Lord, for those that gave of their time this evening. Father God, I pray that you would give each and every person within the sound of my voice, give back to them a tenfold, a blessing that is pressed down, shaken, and overflowing in their life. Cover them, dear Lord, with your mantle of grace. Wrap them in the cloud of witnesses, of witnesses of your glory. We ask these in all blessings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, and we will see you tomorrow on the road toward Calvary. Thank you so much. And in the meantime and in between time, may the road rise to meet you in your lane. Peace.